Welcome, welcome everyone to the All Things Mentoring Lounge that is provided by the International Mentoring Community, a place to encourage conversation for you to share your perspectives as we share our perspectives. And it is all things mentoring from every angle that you can think of. And welcome, this is Dr. Stephen Hobbs. I am the Director of Certification. And uh, we have with us Doug, who is the Director of Education and Outreach. And uh, this is what we call a collaborative conversation between Doug and I. And we will be inviting others into the call and to the live stream as we start to move into that world. And um, today we are actually gonna have a chat about collaborative conversations, but I also know Doug has a Quora um, response that he has uh, given into that world and he can explain a little bit more about Quora. And then someone asked me a very interesting question and we're gonna bring that up near the end of our conversation about collaborative conversations. So Doug, is there anything in particular that you want to update us about from an IMC, your world of mentoring, uh, things that are happening so people can get a sense of what we're what we're up to? Uh, the only thing I that seems to stand out is that the the individuals that we have uh, that are working their way through the certificate of competence um are still moving forward and, and we're 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 using the journey mentor which is myself to help guide them through through the certification process and they are definitely making progress and and pulling together their portfolio so that they can go through the verification uh process yeah and people certainly jump on the imc internationalmentoringcommunity.com website, learn a lot more about the different kinds of certification. It's great that you mentioned that is because uh, while they're individuals going through, there is two of them that are going through like a cohort. They're, they're gonna work on it together as they move through. And we certainly encourage you, you can come in individually and or come in as a cohort. And we're gonna be taking a new cohort in uh, the beginning of October. So let us know if you're interested in, in that. So I think let's jump into this collaborative conversation um, question around mentoring. Now, people ask us about it. It's something we talk a lot about as we move forward, because it is a conversation that the mentor mentee is having. And if it can be collaborative, it even strengthens it. So when you hear the word collaborative conversation, why don't you share your perspective as a practitioner about what you would align with that? And then I'll probably give a little bit more of a, a technical academic kind of uh, consideration of it. But um, Doug, what's your thoughts? Well, I see collaborative as part of the, the two-way trusted relationship. So, um, you know, where both, both par parties, the mentor and the mentor are, feeding off of each other and and the conversation just evolves and continues to do so so when i you know part of that is the the whole aspect of effective communication skill sets is with a collaborative conversation you want to know when you should speak and when you should just listen and let the other person you know yeah. tell their story and evolve yeah, I, and I think it's great. It is, you got to get that listening part. And sometimes we think of conversation as um, I tend to speak more. And I think we know that story of two ears, one mouth. <laughs> so I think that that's what's important to, um, you know, to take into consideration. So from a, a, a practice, deep practice perspective, how might you go about a collaborative conversation? Well, I think the, the big thing is understanding what the conversation is about, first off. So what is it that you're trying to address or deal with? So, you know, if there's, you identify some issues that you feel that we need to examine a little bit more in the relationship, then that's when you would start to engage in a little bit more of a structured collaborative approach to, to make sure that you both understand what it is that you're trying to accomplish and then taking the steps that you need to in order to get there. Yeah. 
And, and I think what's important here is that you, we in the IMC and Doug in his practice uses the word issue rather than problem. We hear so often, well, we're going to have a conversation about the problem you have. That's not quite what mentoring is about. What we're looking at is from an issue point of view, because an issue could be a problem, but it could also be an appreciation. And sometimes the conversations about appreciation, how you extend and expand something that you've learned, something that you've experienced, and that's important to um, mentoring. And if we just keep coming at it from a problem point of view, it can actually, I, I for me, I, I, Doug, you can share what you, you've got here. It sort of chips away at the arrangement and the relationship if you keep coming at it from a problem point of view. And I think we need to expand it out and issue is a great, great word that we use. Well, and I also, I also view it from the aspect that an issue if, if left untouched will become a problem. So why not, why don't we, you know, in our collaborative conversation, why don't we deal with it, the issue before it does actually become a problem? And then, then we have to think of different approaches to deal with it. Yeah, and I always think of issue as what's the question, the mentoring conversation is about getting to the answer. And I think it's a beautiful, simple way of taking a look at the, the mentoring arrangement and uh, relationship. So, yeah, that's great. I, I'm just going to add a couple of things here is when you dig into the word collaboration, it's actually from a connection of cooperation and assertiveness. Is that when, and let's use the mentor-mentee situation because we're talking about mentor, is that when the mentor and mentee are in a conversation then you're looking for a certain level of, of assertiveness. Now, it may not be there at the very beginning from the mentee, because I know the mentor can do it, but the two-way trusted relationship that you used earlier, you want to get to the point where the mentee and the mentor are in an assertive perspective. They can bring their views so that they can then cooperate with one another to be able to see where this conversation goes. And the other part that I would add to it, and I, a lot of people who are listening in, or this is your first time, I love to play with words. <laughs> and if you take the word conversation and you flip the V and the S, you can form the word conservation. So what I see from a mentoring point of view is that the conversation you're having is to have a conservation of the topics, the issues, the lived experience, the ideas that you're pulling out of and testing through mentoring. And that's why I think mentoring is so, so strong because it is a collaborative conversation. It is a collaborative conservation because of the conversation. And I always have that jiggling around when I'm, I'm, I'm chatting and I'm doing my, my mentoring with other, and in other ways too, when I'm having conversations just in general, I have that sort of in the background going, oh, remember, remember, remember. So, and I'm listening and how, how I'm doing it, right? So, and, and I think the, that listening part that you shared, I think is so important the responsive listening, and I'm being particular there and the using the adjective responsive is not just listening to share your thoughts, but to respond with the, with the mentee. Is there anything else about collaborative conversations that strikes you as something we need to share today? The one, you know, certainly, and it depends a lot on who it is that you're working with as a mentor-mentee relationship, but I've come across something in the work that I'm doing in the mental health space where working with individuals, it is extremely crucial that you understand when it's your place to be quiet and just listen because the individual is, is venting in order to get rid of the, the turmoil that's going on inside of them and they don't want you to say anything. And so I have had times where, you know, there's been, through text messages, there's been this barrage of, of messages, one after the other and after the other. And they're not looking for, for, for my input. They just need to know that there's somebody on the other end 
that is getting these messages and and leave it at that. They're not looking for your advice. They're not looking for you to share lived experiences. They just they need to vent, and that's a large part of of that. That's a kind of a funny collaborative conversation, but but it is still one. It's sort of like the collaboration of silence. Yes. Right. And just listening in between the words that the person, the mentee is sharing with you. And in that silence of, of your own, you can pick up so much more so that when the time comes to have that conversation, right, then you have more to interact with. Yeah. Yeah. And from a journey mentor point of view, you know that certainly while you're helping the mentors get their certification, you also know that from your own experience in the mental health area and your own practice around using journey mentor. And, and I think you're picking up a really good point. And I think that that goes back to, um, you know, the two ears, one mouth, Right, the whole notion of collaboration is to just to know what the situation is bringing to you, right, for you, with you, because of you, right, so that you can um, interact with uh, the person accordingly. Okay, this notion of collaborative conversation is one of the uh, action outcomes that's associated with the um, uh, the uh, certification of competence. And certainly from an awareness um, about mentoring is, is picking up on this and finding ways in which to bring it forward. It's one of the areas that we're going to uh, create a course around and in the near future. Um, we have another one that I, I think is coming forward faster just simply because of some questions that are being asked of us, all right? And, um, and speaking of questions, I know that um, you, um, answer Quora questions. And uh, you've selected one for us today, just so that we have a, um, a way of acknowledging that we answer questions in other platforms and bring them to the community. So do you want to just share what that question is and what your response was? Yeah, I certainly can do that. And just so for the benefit of our listeners that Quora is a great website for you to go and take a look to they have a number of different categories, but for our purpose here, I look at uh, mentors and mentoring and business mentoring are the, the two categories that I typically will kind of monitor, for lack of a better choice of words, the, the questions that are being posed. And how Quora is set up is they actually send them to you by email. So you get an email saying, you know, this person would like an answer to this question you know, and you have the option you can skip or delete or 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 whatever or respond to to the question and then share your answers. But the the one that I I thought would be very timely because I'm asked this a fair amount lately is what value do mentors add to mentees? So what value do mentors add to mentees? And my response that I provided, and I'll just read it to you so you get the gist of it, is that my first question is, what do you, as a mentee, hope to gain from a mentoring relationship? Mentoring is a two-way trusted relationship where both the mentor and mentee will learn and grow personally and professionally. Professionally, sorry. We sometimes forget about the aspect of personal growth. It cannot be overlooked. What value do I bring? I am part of what can be a life-changing experience. When I leverage the training that I've been provided as a mentor, guiding someone through their transformation on a personal and professional basis, it truly is a life-changing experience. When I look at the research that has been done on the value of mentoring, it is quite clear that mentoring is viewed as bringing business value to organizations but also to each and every employee in that organization. Is it worth the journey? Can you afford not to have a mentor and experience a life-changing experience? So I think you're sharing the ripple effect at the end there, mm -hmm. right? Well, yeah. there's the direct response, and then there's that ripple effect out into all the other people that are touched indirectly because of the mentoring arrangement. 
Yeah. It, it's, it, there's so much there of value from a mentor to a mentee. And I know you in the Quora responses, they're, they're meant to be uh, sure, short and sweet. They're, you don't want to, you know, um, write a book. <laughs> okay. And I know you've done quite a few of these. Do you, do you have an estimate over the last couple of years about how many of these you've done? No, I like number wise, I wouldn't know. I know that I have a document that is where I copy and pasted question and add my response and it's over 16 pages long. Um, but I, I know the numbers are greater than that because I've, I've kind of backed off a bit on doing that. Um, I want to get back on because I think where we're going to end up going is all those questions and answers could be turned into a book. Yeah. And I think from a community point of view, the international mentoring community point of view is interacting with um, other platforms like Quora is, is important. And that's why we'll be encouraging other people who get involved in the community, maybe from a different language point of view, there's different other platforms out there um, that we don't know about and how might we be able to interact with them as well. But I think to this question of value for the, for the mentee, um, I sort of look at it from the perspective of truth, worth, and usefulness. That's how I look at it. And I go, okay, as a mentor, my value is I'm sharing my truth. And therefore, mentee, please share your truth. <laughs> so we can get to the truth of this, right? The other one is the worth is because I figured out from my own lived experience, this is what's worth sharing with you. So what's worth you picking up that you can use in your life? And it brings out the, the sense of worth. And the usefulness or utility is really important because I believe in this two-way trusted relationship and, and the, the message you, you shared, is it not about, okay, well, if I've learned something here from you as a mentee mentor, right in our relationship, if it's useful, why don't I put it in, <laughs> into action, right? And there, there's some, something to be said for that because you're not just having a conversation for having a conversation, right? There is some sense of how might I use what, what's here. Okay. I'm not saying that fun is taken out of it, right? Sometimes you just want to have a fun time together, right? As a mentor, mentee. So, yeah. Well, I, I had a question that was brought to me and I thought it was kind of interesting. And I said, I thought that I would bring it to our conversation here. And Doug, um, I haven't shared what it is um, because it just really came in yesterday and I haven't had a chance to so I'm just going to ask it in, into here, okay? And the person asked me, is coaching overtaking mentoring to the extent that mentoring won't be a value, and playing it out, that's why I thought I would ask here, a value um, in the workplace? And I went, okay, where did this come from? <laughs> where, where would this question come from and then I started to realize is that there's a lot of people who talk about certification and coaching and the established coaching field and then they sort of say well isn't mentoring just something secondary to coaching and I I don't I want to hit the reset button on those that thinking right I just sort of <clears throat> come on we need to we need to take a look at it but before I sort of share a bit more What's your thoughts to that question? Is coaching overtaking mentoring so that mentoring is no longer of value? What are your thoughts? I think it's actually the other way. I think that if it's, it's almost, if you were to think of it as a horse race and they're kind of neck and neck coming down the home stretch and one inches ahead of the other one, mentoring isn't, you know, three or four pole lengths behind they're side by side and and what i'm seeing certainly from the stuff that i'm dealing with is mentoring is starting to inch ahead a lot more than what it was a couple of years ago i i just i think because we're exploring so many different options of how mentoring can be the practice of mentoring how it can be used that people are going hmm i think i might want to engage a mentor before i engage a coach that's, you know, that's certainly the one thing. The other 
thing that I find is that, and I'm hearing this from coaches, is the, the whole aspect of the, and you touched on it briefly, was the, the whole aspect of certification and a lot are feeling that they've, they've lost that. The, the actual certification of coaches has become lost in the everybody can hang a shingle and all that sort of stuff. And there's, there's not the structure and rigor around that certification process because now they have another horse in the horse race that's running side by side and, you know, they need to figure out, okay, where are we going and what is it that we're going to provide to those that want to become coaches? Yeah. And I'll pick up on that a little bit is because for me, coaching is really about performance and involvement, right? A coach is performance and involvement with the coachee. With mentor, it's very much um, more about um, the life and the full extent from a place of evolvement. And therefore, you can move into coaching if you need to. And I know a coach can move into mentoring, but there's this more, you can move coaching into mentoring, but you almost have to say, I'm taking this hat off, my coaching hat off, I'm putting my mentoring, where in the mentoring, you can do a little bit of it and it doesn't feel out of place. You know, there's, there's a, I know it's a fine distinction. I, I, I get that it's a fine distinction, but I think it's one worth understanding and that's why, again, it, it seems that this question came in because Doug and I have chatted about this over the last year or so is I think it's time to put a, a, a course out there about coaching and mentoring and how do you consider them? How do they compete? How do they collaborate? Right. How do they connect and put it out there for people to um, to understand uh, what's there? OK, but I think it comes back. Does it not, Doug? I, I, and it's, it's amazing how questions show up, right? Even the question that you just shared from a core point of view, it's really about truly understanding a collaborative conversation, I believe is a way in which to understand, are you using coaching or mentoring with the person? Is this truly a collaboration of involvement and performance, or is this about a collaborative conversation about involvement and looking at your life in a bit more of a whole kind of idea. So I maybe I've opened up some things there. Is there anything you would want to share in response? The one thing that jumped out as I was listening to what you were saying was, the, and it's that when we look at, at mentoring from, from the practic practical application of, of the process and concepts, we look at, at it from a personal and professional growth perspective and how important and significant it is for us as mentors to take a look at the individual's personal growth. So, and by that, I mean, you know, the self-esteem, self-confidence, self-doubt, all of that stuff. And it's even more important now to, I call it, I do, a, if I'm meeting a prospective client for the first time, I kind of do a quick scan of their, of who they are as a person. And I look for telltale signs that, we may have some issues that we need to deal with before we can even address their professional growth, their career development piece. Yeah. And I think that that's always a great thing to remember, right? Coming back to the definition that we use, two-way trusted relationship arrangement, personal and professional. It isn't, okay, sometimes a coach might get in there and just do the personal or professional. Sometimes that's how it gets put together. Um, and, and by no means, anyone who's a coach who's listening into this is that I'm saying you don't know how to do mentoring or anything. That's not what I'm saying. It's just being aware of what is the conversation? What is the educative approach you're using? And be very clear so you can be consistent in your approach. Um, I hear some people say, well, coaching and mentoring are just the same thing. And I I have to hit the reset button on that one as, <laughs> as well and, and help people understand it. But um, I, I'm going to have a conversation with the person who asked me that because they just sort of sent it to me in an email. And um, because I think it would be great to sort of dig into that and find out 
where did that question actually come from? Was it from themselves or was it brought through them to me because of others? I, I don't know the extent of the background of that. So I'm just gonna dig around a bit more. And that's what the international mentoring community can do is that bring questions like that to the community. We find answers, we dig around and look for what's going on. And sometimes we go, oh, I think we've got a response to that or, I think we may need to look at that a little bit more and dig around and dig around. And one of the things that Doug does is he reaches out to different people, even academic um, researchers uh, for research, but also asks them to do different kinds of research, which is always good because we get to report on the results and research of others, just as we get to report on the research and results of what we do with IMC. And that's what we're bringing as resources all the time, mentoring resources into what's available. And that's why we created the uh, mentoring library. And uh, that's why we have now this All Things Mentoring Lounge that uh, will be up on um, the first and third Wednesdays of every month at 10 a.m. on Mountain Time. So you can certainly join us. If you have questions, you can send them in. The, um, there is in around the show more notes, you will see ways in which to connect with us to, um, to bring your questions forward. Um, so Doug, maybe um, from um, a perspective, I'll give you a, a chance to sort of take the, the last words out, but I also wanna remind everyone, uh, please uh, like, comment, share what you see in the video, uh, subscribe to the channel because you're finding it probably on the YouTube channel or if not, click over to the YouTube channel and uh, subscribe so you can ring the bell so you can always get the, the newest um, updates about what's happening. So take us out, Doug. Is there anything in particular you want to share with us for ending up today's call? No, I think, you know, we've, we've covered off some really interesting topics. We talked about the collaboration or the collaborative conversation. And, you know, we looked at one of the questions from the Quora website and, and, and uh, and my response to that. And so I think that we've covered off everything that we set out to do so today. So it's been a great call and I hope our listeners feel the same way. Yeah. So with that, everyone, uh, take care. Remember, uh, find us on the first and third Wednesdays of a month at 10 a.m. Mountain. And uh, we're going to be going a live stream if all things works out on YouTube on the, the first uh, Wednesday of October. Well, we're entering into October, aren't we? So with that, take care.